Hi, everybody. Welcome to Iris and Claire. I'm John. And I'm Aaron. And today we're going to be talking about Quasitron. Ooh. But before we jump into that, we did get some feedback last week. We oh. asked the fine folks out there in listener land about their memories of computer shows back in the 80s. You were talking about the good times back when you used to head up to Dayton. That's right. Um, Paul Kitching wrote in. And he said, uh, yes, we had a big show in London's Olympia Exhibition Center during the 80s. He said it was later moved to Earl's Court. Oh. Uh, (laughs) It was called the Personal Computer World Show. It ran from 78 to 89. Boy, that's that's the golden era right there. What was the Olympica? What was the? Uh, London's Olympia Exhibition Center. I think that trumps the Dayton Hair Arena slightly. (laughs) Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, He said he was there between most years from about 83 to 88 with the computer club he was in. He got his Amiga 500 from the Olympia one in September 87. For four hundred pounds. Oh man! If I could, if I could jump back in time, if I could turn back to go time. on. If, if you could find if a way, I could turn, but it, wouldn't it be awesome? Because I clearly here, here's the American computer. It's a bunch of PC stuff, basically. When I was mm-hmm. there. Let's go to like nineteen eighty four, eighty eight. Let's go nineteen eighty seven. Right. Right. You've got all the cr- in London. You got all those wacky. It's just like a the rainbow. Mm-hmm. It's a rainbow of awesome. Yes. Yeah. You know that would you've be, got the, you, be great. You got the B, It's still it's still time for the BBC Micro plus the new kids on the block, the Amiga and the ST. I love it. Spectrum's probably still present. This the 128K just released. I'd love to see some video. Of someone just strolling around. Oh, man, yeah, if you know of a video of that on YouTube, yeah, uh, hit us up because yeah, we yeah. we'd love to see that. That'd be awesome. I love watching any. If there's anything, it's like, I'm just walking around in the 80s somewhere. I watch all those videos <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> it's like, here's my junior high English class in the 80s. You know, it's, it's funny. Like, I found a video. I'm, I'm perpetually looking for this arcade front wall from this arcade that had St. Almonds mm-hmm. back when I was a kid. It's Twilight Zone. I'll talk about it. But I found a video of someone just walking around the St. Almonds Mall, in the, and it was awesome. I was like, oh. oh, man. And right before they get to where the arcade is, the video cuts out. It's like, you know, they Whoa. say the Twilight Zone is still there just when they closed up the front part of the mall so you couldn't walk through it anymore. They say Who they says left. that? Me. That sounds great. They say. I wish you weren't full of crap, but They say that all the machines are still there. They just cut all the power. and They That's just, just left the wall they actually, they actually bricked up the front. <laughs> just and like if, in a pose yeah, or a twist. And if some enterprising individual would break into the St. Albans Mall and bust down the, the, the bricks. If I know, thought that were true, I would leave right now and get in the car with a sledgehammer and head right down. Because they wouldn't know the difference. You know, I bet. I mean, obviously the machines are not there anymore. But I bet if you went into the place where the Twilight Zone was and you peeled back a couple layers of paint, you could probably find the original. Were there murals on the wall? It was stuff? one huge mural. That was the, the front of the arcade. was a big, huge. And it was this cool, like, 50s era space mural. Like a guy with a laser gun and a bubble helmet. Did it look like shooting. the skate arena with, like, Spock oh, no, with the phaser and stuff like that? Better. This was, like, professionally done by okay. someone that was really good. The skate arena was not professionally no, done. No, <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah. Pretty funny. Yeah. Um, so this week, Aaron, we're doing Quasitron. The main character of Quasitron is this robot. Right? That's right. So I want to talk about robots. Okay, cool. Okay. I knew you'd be down for talking about yeah. robots. The 80s were a great time if you were a fan of robots. This was the first decade where commercially available robots hit the scene. Yeah. Do you remember lusting after any of these robots back in the day? Or oh, did yeah. you have any robots I, well, back I didn't, in the day? I really wanted, I've talked about my little robot that takes the 8-track tape. Yeah, what is that guy called? Oh, God. It's now, called like the XLT the, or something the, like uh, that? Uh, what is his name? I can't remember now. You the 2XL? Two, the 2XL. Two yeah. And he and they had him at Hill. Explain this robot, because I think most people well, don't know what this thing is. Let me is. tell you what the 80s, let me tell you about robots in the 80s. They all did nothing. <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, you know I'm saying? You could say, look at this robot. It robot. The robot was just a co- weird thing of plastic. They didn't mm-hmm. do any. It didn't like a proper robot. It so, was not R2-D2 in your living room. 2XL was a was a robot. with. It was a little robot about yay big. If you're listening to radio, I'd say a foot and a half tall. All right? And it had four or five buttons on the front and an eight-track tape deck. Did it have a face? It was, did, okay, yeah. So it was smiling at you. Oh, you know, just, it was a, yeah. It was a happy robot, and you put your and you put the tape in it, and you would it would ask you trivia questions or math questions, or just talk about stuff or tell stories, and you hit the buttons, and it would, it would answer the questions. And if you messed up, it would laugh at you. It had this more wacky laugh. It had a real distinct. It was a cruel thing. robot. No, it was a it was a happy robot. It sounded like it had um, a malicious streak. It sounded like if you had like an, an uh, a New York uncle. That's what it sounded like. It was a real it had a real. I don't know what ethnic. Yeah, did he have eth- like a Brooklyn accent? It was an ethnical, like an ethnic voice, but I don't know which one. Mm. But it was it was not what you would expect a robot to sound right, like. Is right. my point. But it was a lot of fun. So that was one I I, I loved. That eventually picked up. 
And I also like, uh, if you ever watch Starcade, occasionally they would give away a robot on Starcade. Starcade, the video game uh, game show for if you're not in this country. And it's the only one we had, I think. I don't remember any other ones. Do you? No. Uh, well, there was Nick Arcade in the no, 90s. No, that, that was, was more is, my wheelhouse. This, more, this was... is way back. But on, occasionally, you would, they would give away these robots on the show. And you're like, oh, man. And you knew these things were probably garbage. Mm-hmm. But they would roll around. I don't know what they did. But I always envisioned the robot getting me a cold one yeah. or like a sandwich, mm-hmm. you know. But I don't really know what you. Could, I mean, I guess they had a remote control or who knows. What What about you? So I always, I you know, when I was a kid, I had a little Alfie. Alfie was made by Play School. Okay, I and, remember Alfie. Yeah. Sure, yeah. And he was a he was a happy character. Yeah, he was about the same size as as your robot, but he was not as wide. Yeah. Um, and basically, what Alfie was was um, he, he did nothing. Alfie did nothing. He didn't speak. Um, but you could put these cards into Alfie, kind of yeah. like punch cards, and you would, I can't remember exactly how you would tell Alfie what card you'd put in, but you would do like little matching games where you would press a button on one side and then press a button on the other side, and if you did it right, it went meh, meh. And yeah, if you did yeah. it wrong, it went meh. Um, and, but Alfie just looked so cool. It didn't matter that he was totally useless. He looked like a robot. Yeah, he looked like a robot, and therefore he was cool. In, you know, Duncan mentioned the big tracks, which mm-hmm. I've got one of these. Now, so it's a robot tank. So I'm going to count it. So you're able to, to program this? It is. And you, you would program it to say, like, it had a little input pad with, like, directional buttons and a laser. Like, you could hit the laser. And you could say, like, you're going to go forward six spaces, and you're going to tilt, pivot to the right, pivot to the left, diagonal, shoot the gun, go back. And it even had a, a gimmick on the back. This thing could get you a beer, sort of. Because mm-hmm. it had, like, a little dump, like a dump truck style hookup, a trailer that would go in the back. And you could have it go into the kitchen. I guess your mom could set a Coke in it, and right. then it could drive you back. You could program here. it to go If back. you were an ace program, it could, it could dump the, tr- the you know. You just lay down on the floor and it oh, dumps no. the liquid into your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> That's dedication to a gimmick right there. If you want your robot to feed you a soda in the 80s, you had to work for it. <laughs> Think about what if you programmed it slightly wrong and dumped the pop on your head, <laughs> on your crotch. It could be horrible. <laughs> the, the possibilities are endless. How many cats tracks. were traumatized by the big tracks <laughs> oh, over man. the years? I'm sure that they were, they were terrified beyond measure. You know, I was looking at some of the really high dollar robots from the 80s that were hundreds and hundreds of bucks. They look so cool, like Tommy made one. And you see it in the ad. It's mixing like a scotch and soda in the ad. He's no like, kidding. yeah. Bar- could, the robot? Yeah, and you could program this thing to make drinks. It would somehow remember it. You're kidding And uh, so I've looked on eBay and yeah, you got to get one of these. Yeah, now. yeah. I, what I'm envisioning is just a whole shelf of these early '80s robots. So it looks so cool. It if, doesn't matter if they don't work anymore. I've got. If you go down to the, uh, <coughs> you know, I've talked often about the antique store in Nitro mm-hmm. uh, and how they hose me repetitively. But the owner has a massive collection of robots. Really massive, mm. and it's right up front. It's set, they sit behind the register. It's like hundreds of them. Wow, it's tons. So if you ever want to see like every robot from the '80s and '90s, he's got them all. They're all lined up. This is in this is Nitro. This is Nitro. Okay. Next time I go up there, I'll take some footage. Yeah. For, for, and put it up. I'd love to see that. Yeah, it's cool. But robots, you know, have we even to this day? This is this is 2019 as we record. This is the crow flies. Have they came up with a robot yet that can do the stuff you really want it to do? Not for home use. You know, if you watch some of those Boston Robotics videos of the military robots that are yeah. like jumping over cars and I stuff like that. I saw one pulling a truck the other day. Yeah, it was, like a, yeah. Was a, it was like a herd of them. They had them all strapped together. But our our, our dream, our collective dream of a Rosie from That's the Jetsons right. type robot yet to materialize, unfortunately. Uh, you know, what's taking them so long? That's what I'm asking. You know, so we can put a guy on the moon, but we can't get something to go get me a, a cold one on the fridge. We definitely get with need, it, NASA. We need more ways to keep us from moving around. That's right. When you put it like that, you sound like, you sound like a bunch of lazy bums. <laughs> Listen, robots need to do our bidding. That's what they're there for. That's true. That's why they're created. Well, Who they, was it that had the rules of the robots? Was that Asimov? Isaac, Isaac Asimov. Yeah. 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 I wonder Threw if, those out the window. Yeah, I don't think those rules are going to We got robots killing stuff, and yeah. they got guns and tear gas, tasers. They've got it all. Who says you can't have it all? Yeah, we blew, we blew those things away. Robot rights my butt. They're done. So, this... Actually, let's just roll right into... That's it. That no transitions. We're in. We're rolling right into a game about a robot, Quasitron. You know, Quasitron reminded me a little bit, speaking of crazy robots from the 80s, did you ever see The Black Hole? Ooh. I still haven't seen that one. That's We're not regarded about, as a very good film. Well, I did. Opinions vary. Mm. But the head robot in that 
the good guy robot looks a little bit like the robot in this. Okay. Kind of a bonky head. It kind of the eyes can kind of pivot around. Right. You know, it's sort of like that's what it reminded me of. If like that guy and Tom Servo had a kid, it'd mm -hmm. be this robot here. So Quasitron. Now, of course, we'd never heard of this boat. We never we have no idea what's no. going on most of the time. Um, this came out in '86, and I want to make a correction from last week when I mocked you. You owe you one on the dates of the games. Because uh, we were talking about Chase HQ mm -hmm. and how there's no way it could have this could have predated. I think it was what I said. Anyway, I was way off. I can't believe they were releasing games that late on the Spectrum. It just blows my mind to think about. All the way up till '93. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's a testament to the, the the willingness of the British people to hang on to what's their own. I lo I love that about yeah. them. That's great because I mean, people are here. They just they just ditch everything. No, how many yeah. iPhones have you had? I already like threw away three computers today. That's you just use them, got sick of them, gone. Gone. That quick. You've gotten so sick of stuff now, you don't even sell it. You just no. toss it in the garbage. Right in the garbage. USA. <laughs> so Quasitron came out in 86, published by Houston Consultants Limited. I like that. Mm -hmm. And this was taken and brought to life by our good buddies from the Amiga, the people over at Graft Gold. We've done a ton of Graft Gold games. Graft Gold. And so... Um, this this game is very reminiscent of a C64 game called Paradroid. That's what I've heard. I've, I've not played Paradroid, well, but everybody says that. Well, there's a reason for that. Okay. Um, uh, the author of this game, Quasitron, Steve Turner, was part of the team responsible for Paradroid. So it's, a, it's, a, it's all good in the hood. Yeah. Everybody's cool with that. Uh, this thing ran on the 48K, uh, one player... And you did have the ability to use the old joystick, which is was handy and dandy. Both this debuted at the original price. I love finding these, right around nine pound, nine pound. Hmm. Well, in American money, it's what about twelve bucks yeah, back in those days. Seems reasonable. Sure, sure, I, I agree with you on that. So, um, what is Quasitron? When you look at Quasitron, you think to yourself, "My God." I'm never going to get this it one. It looks much, much, <laughs> much more or complicated than it truly is. Yes, sir. So, again, this started as a port of, of uh, Paradroid, sort of. Uh, and the fellow responsible for Paradroid mainly was a guy named Andy Braybrook. Now, Paradroid, you never you said you never played no. it. I had a cup of coffee with it uh, a couple on the emulation a while back because I'd heard so much about it. And I gave up because it seemed too hard. <laughs> I, I don't have, the, I didn't have the uh, testicular fortitude that I do now to get right. into these games. But it's, uh, it's regarded. Some people say it's the best ever C sixty four game. Very highly, highly regarded. So, what they did here, Turner was like, well, we, we're not going to port this over. We're going to, we're going to kind of make the Spectrum have its own sort of version. Yeah. And that's what they came up with. Um, so in this game, you play a robot named CLP two. Uh, or to his friends, Klepto, which I like. I, what kind of friends are these? Well, you know? well, if you did, you read the flavor text of this game when it came up. His buddies call him arsonist. <laughs> you know, it's like. <laughs> well, it depends on what you're after. If you need to kind of set fires, I guess it depends. Man. Yeah, it depends on who you're running with. So, if you read the flavor text in this, the uh, background. Uh, from what I could tell, and you stop me, but if you heard otherwise, uh, the. Basically, the underground citadel of Quasitron mm -hmm. is ran by evil cult of mutant droids. Yep, mutant mutant droids. droids. Those are the worst ones. Can you have a mutant? You know, mutant. You know, it sort of signifies this is a sort of a biological <laughs> life form. Yeah. Ooh. Can just you like Babylon Five? Can you have bio robots? I guess that is the Babylon Five That's question, right. isn't it? That's right. Uh, so, you're you're. You're part of a gang, or you're a your klepto is, is the servant of a bunch of guys trying to stop these other guys, basically. And so they're like, "Listen, this robot has been a pain in our butts. He doesn't fall in line. We're going to use it. We're going to train him and use him on the enemy." Mm -hmm. So just like arson in your example, that's the guy you turn loose on the bad guy. That's right. You it's don't good have a guy like you that. You don't want arson hanging out the pad. No. You know. <laughs> no. You want him out and about. <laughs> and klepto is exactly the same. You need to dispatch this sucker. Get him out there. So his his your mission in this game is pretty simple. Go kill everything, deactivate everything, and try to get what they got. Take their stuff, basically. Pretty simple. Go around and kill stuff, or well, eventually you kill it any way it goes. Just take mm -hmm. sometimes you can salvage stuff from them. So this game takes place in what I can only describe as a uh, 
Uh, Marble Madness, Crystal Castle style. Isometric. Isometric, that's right. The uh, But it reminds me, especially with the ramps and stuff, it's very, it's very similar to sort of, a, of a, a Marble Madness. Yeah, you could take any one of these levels and turn it into a Marble Madness level. That's right. Uh, your robot appears, and you are off and running. Now, right out of the gate, let's talk about the controls. Let's go ahead and get it out of the way. Uh, when they created this game, they were like, you know what? We sure like Qbert. Let's rip off their control scheme, because that's mm -hmm. what it reminded me of. In, in Qbert, if you ever played Qbert in the arcade, the joystick is tilted diagonally, yeah. so you can play it better. And you, you try to play this at your house or on your arcade machine, it don't work, does it? Well, you've got to physically put the do joystick that's at right. a 45 degree angle. This is the same way. Now, when I, start, I fired up the old gamepad to play this game, gamepad no good. Because you can't really tilt the gamepad yeah. at a 45 degree angle. You can, it's awkward. Yeah, it, it sure is. Uh, and so I had a perpetually tough time controlling uh, Klepto. How did you? How did you fare? Same, same. I did not. I did not find enjoyment in the controls of this game. No. As an added bonus, the uh, depth and the cornering of going through the uh, the maze or the world of, of Quasitron is difficult. And the, it's not just the controls. There's a lot of edges. There's yeah. a lot of depth. There's a lot of things, uh, ramps and, and stuff. And our buddy Klepto, he doesn't stop on a dime, as it were. He sort of skates around life. It's funny because you think something that moves that slow would stop pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah, but he doesn't. He sort of sort of drifts to a stop. Klepto, <laughs> Klepto is not a speed demon. No. That's for sure. And and which is which is fine because in this game you're not in a hurry. Basically, this is a slow game, mm -hmm. and it's the slowest action game I think I've ever played. Um, so your goal in this, as we mentioned, is to take your robot and navigate through this uh, rampy maze of uh, of uh, iso uh, what you call it, iso. Uh, help so me out here. It's an isometric isometric environment. Isometric environment. Mm -hmm. That sounds better than what I had. And you got to get through this and try to kill or take over all the other robots. Mostly Simple. just kill. Well, no, I, that's not true. I, I did mostly try to grapple. Well, when you grapple, the end result is that you take all of the robot's yeah, yeah. guts and he's rendered Well, you're useless. right, but I mean, I, I didn't usually use the laser. So, you have several choices how you can dispatch your enemy. You can you can laser him, mm -hmm. always good for a LARP. Mm -hmm. uh, you can grapple him, which means you sort of like hack into the robot. Now, what in my mind, what happened when, when you grapple is it's just like wrestling. It's bam, you know, just, the you arms lock, lock up. up. Yeah. <laughs> and then a little thing comes out and goes, That's I like that. It's better than what I had. But when you grapple a robot, that starts the uh, hacking the other robot mini game. Mm -hmm. Now, which is this is really the, the a big part of the game. It's it's almost a, disingenuous to call it a mini game. It's more like an equal part of the game. It is. Now and then, or you could another hilarious thing you can do is just shut. <laughs> Is just run into the robot <coughs> until they explode, or you can shove them off the side. True. Until they fall off. Running into a robot until it explodes is also hazardous to your own. Yes, health. especially if it's a tough robot. Yeah. So the robots are ranked mm -hmm. uh, from like one to nine, right. and, and then there'll be a letter in front of them to signify what they are. It's like Stratego. Is it? Yeah. I've never played Stratego. Are you kidding? Me? I'm not lying. I've never played it. Wow. We'll have to play it sometime. It's a pretty uh, good game. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so explain what the different similar. So is. in Stratego, the pieces are ranked. Uh -huh. So when you go up against another piece, you have to. If you are a higher number, you will be victorious. I see. I see. So you've got different types of robots too in this game. Mm -hmm. Some of them are just like maintenance bots. Some of them can shoot you. Some of them are real aggressive, they come after you. Yeah, and the reason why this is important is because when you grapple with these robots, the equipment that you can take from them depends on what kind of robot they are. That's right. So, I usually would start off with something at least, I would never start off going after something that had a rank lower than five. Oh, yeah. I, I'd be I, I even think that that's too high. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. that, but I like to, what I like to do is start off and grapple them. So once you grapple them, why would you do that? But well, the reason is to hack them, to steal their stuff. The grappling, let's talk about the grappling mini game. Because mm -hmm. I think I understand that, uh, I mean, I was successful at it because I, I was doing what I thought would make it work. Would you like me to try to explain it? Go ahead. Okay, so picture in your mind, uh, you have a row of blocks in the center of the screen that can either be turned blue or yellow. Yep. Okay. Then you have what appear to be kind of very rudimentary circuit board traces that lead from the side of the screen to the center. Okay, you have a set number of triangles and that you can use to uh, electrify these traces to try and get the colors of the squares to light up in the middle. Yeah. 
Now, make them yellow. Uh, there are two colors in this game. There are blue and yellow. You can choose whether you'd rather play the blue side or the yellow side. This was something that I did not discover until I watched Pixels at Dawn's video in which he said you can choose either side. For some reason, I always just assumed you could only pick yellow. I always picked yellow. Yeah. And I did watch Pixels thing, it just didn't sink in. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, the computer takes the part of the other color and the computer tries to electrify more uh, squares of, of his color. And uh, whoever electrifies the most squares wins. It is possible to tie, in which case nothing happens. It's really? A draw. Did you ever yeah. have that happen? Mm -hmm. I never had that happen. Um, it's it's uh, it's nutty. I watch some advanced players get to the real higher uh, higher levels where it gets a little more complicated. Mm -hmm. uh, it's. It is a huge part of the game. Yeah. Uh, and um, did you talk about the different levels and how you... How not you, yet. Okay. Go okay. ahead. Okay. So in, in this game, uh, the way that you maneuver between the different levels is you go to a certain... It looks like a like a rec or a square hole in the ground. It, looks, it didn't look like anything. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it looks kind of like a pit. You go over that and then you can actually select what level you'd like to play on and it looks like the side view of a skyscraper. You yeah. know, I guess this this game all takes place underground, but you're able to take the elevator to different levels depending yeah. on where you are. And uh, there is no, it didn't seem to be, to me, to have any rhyme or reason like the top levels had more high level robots. It always seems sort of random to me. Uh, that may or may not be the case though. Um, and uh, so if you manage to defeat all of the robots on a particular floor, all the lights go out. And, and that's how you know. So that was kind of a neat touch, is that it gives you a visual representation. It yes, I have, you know, I have the feed all yeah. the robots. There are also, they look like um, target reticules yep. uh, on the ground. If you stand over one of those, your robot will heal itself, which Re is good. It recharge, basically. Yeah. Uh, your health in this game is, is this is another one of those games, kind of like James Pond, where they don't give you a health bar. They depend on you to, uh, to look at your robot and his eyes and his overall expression are supposed to signify how well he's doing. That works okay in a game like James Pond where they give you a huge picture of James Pond down there in the corner. I had a hard time reading my robot's face. I think game. you could also go to those terminals and get your overall oh, status can you? as well. Okay, yeah. okay. They've, they've scattered throughout these levels are like look like computer monitors and you could go go to those computer monitors and kind of get info on what's going on, what yeah. you've got. Yeah, Stuff which is like very that. useful. Yeah. Um, the uh, elevator uh, square, the recharge square, once you figure out what they are, you're fine. The first, I was like, I was expecting something more elaborate to be the elevator square when I first played it, but it wasn't. It was pretty easy. And the elevator screen is pretty. I mean, you can't really. It's not like you can go to any point on the map. You can just mm -hmm. go where the elevator goes. But you can see generally where the stuff's at, uh, and you, the computers can kind of give you a map too, because it tells you what's going on. Um, the uh, it's a very, it's a unique game. Mm -hmm. It really is. I can't say I've ever played anything quite like it. I, and I've never played Paradroid. I mean, obviously that is quite like it, but I've never played it. It reminded me of a slower, more complicated version of, of uh, um, that Atari arcade port we played, Attack of the Planet, uh, Planet of the Robot Monsters okay, or whatever. Okay, I can see that. You know, it had yeah. kind of similar... Same viewpoint. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the, the graphics are outstanding. I think they're beautiful. I love the entrance. The theme, the entrance is really... The, it's pretty cool. The, there is no music during the game. There is a hideous... Uh, an, Hideous robot noise. They do. They do whatever you can, whatever they could, to get you to play a new game. Because yeah. as soon as you get to that game over screen, you're just mashing keys to get that sound to go away. The <laughs> that's just like Manic Miner. <laughs> right. That's the year of failures noise. <laughs> play it stop. Yeah. Um, the the scrolling in this is lets it down i yeah. think uh as you go this is one of those it doesn't have smooth scrolling from screen to screen it literally stops where you're at and goes blah, blah, blah. whatever the opposite of smooth scrolling is what yeah. this game has not smooth yeah and all. what what i've read is that this was when they when the uh the programmer was showing off early release copies of this game he he promised the scrolling would be smooth but he never was able to figure out how to to smooth it out that's too bad too uh this and this is again that's i noticed there's been other versions and stuff made on the computer and i can see this is a game that's sort of uh, you can see a better version. For, I mean, you could make this today, and this would probably be a lot of fun, and it would be a whole different game because it'd be a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. The game is not as slow, and this would control so much better with an analog stick. Absolutely, too. Yeah. yeah, or even a trackball would yeah. be better. I mean, like a, like a Crystal Castle mm -hmm. style, right? The controls, and I tried the keyboard and the uh, uh, joystick, and I I had all, that was my number one complaint was was getting 
was getting the guy to do. I mean, I would sit there and just try to get up. Oh, yeah, hands. and it's he's got some sort of momentum. I mean, like whenever you press a direction, he sort of has to get up to where he needs to go. And it, the controls were definitely the worst part of this game for me. Yeah, for it's sure. funny. Even in the docks, it, it recommends you turn the joystick 45 degrees. Mm-hmm. I mean, and, and there's a reason. Uh, the, the sad thing is that the Spectrum can pull off this graphically. It's it's a shame that the controls were such a was such a yeah. sticking point. I'm glad it wasn't just me because I was afraid you're gonna be like, oh, I was kicking this game's butt. No. You're a loser. I was no. like, I was I, I tried so hard, uh, but it was just it was really difficult. So when you grapple another robot, if you pummel it a few times, you're more likely to damage the goodies in there. Mm-hmm. So you're better off just getting like a a nice crisp quick grapple on the guy. Just like wrestling. I can't sit here and tell you with any sort of uh, uh, full knowledge how a grapple activates, when. Well, what you do is you have to press, you you depress the joystick longer than you would to fire the laser, and that activates the grapple maneuver. Yeah. Then you just approach a robot and you just like, I think you just run into him. Yeah, but I mean, you, you can, there are, I, I would often bang into him. A few yeah, times. it's, it, I'm not sure exactly how exact that art is in terms of can you, can you approach a robot every time without banging into him and initiate the grapple? What I would love. Maybe a pro like Pixels can. What I would love to have in this game is the uh, the robot bang effect from One Must Fall when you smash in a burn. That, oh, okay. That's perfect. It'd be the I perfect thought you were talking effect. about like Rise of the Robots, where you see like gears and stuff no. pop off. When no, there, there's a noise in One Must Fall when you hit a robot. It makes it like it's like somebody throwing down a pot. Burn. Mm. It'd be perfect for this game. And when my mind, when I was ramming a robot off a cliff or something mm. like that, I'd hear that burn in my head. Mm. Uh, the uh, I do like the fact that they put that in the game where you can just push them off the side. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it, 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 it takes advantage of the art. And the sad thing is, like I said, the levels in this are really cool. You look at it, you're just like, when I looked at screenshot this, I was like, oh my god, yes. It's like, they're going to be awesome. And it would be awesome if it was easier to control yeah. and quicker. Yeah. And so I guess, I mean, like Bo, we talked about this before the show came on. It's not like there's a ton. This is a fairly, there's a there's a there's some depth to it, but I mean, and as you go up, you get better stuff. You know, when you when you are able to tackle bigger robots, there's also a strategy involved in terms of your batteries because as your energy goes down, you can recharge, but it recharges slower. So you have to keep continuously like upgrading your equipment to make your uh, batteries last longer. If you have certain types of equipment, they'll drain your battery quicker. You know, if you manage to get a really nice uh, set of guns, for example, if you just drive your robot around for a while, battery drains, everything drains a battery in mm-hmm. this. So you're perpetually looking to get recharged. Yeah. You're which I mean, it's it's good. It keeps the game from being too simple. Right, but I mean, you're you're moving you're moving along. That's for sure. Uh, but you know, for me, this one was just hampered. I, I I had trouble getting into it. I did play it quite a bit. Uh, you can it's you can jump right in and play it, and I love the look of it. Again, I'm often amazed that the uh, uh, this when you have this sort of uh, Marvel Madnessy style setup, you can really do a lot with it to make oh, it look yeah. stuff look nice. And for me, because uh, I know Paradroid is a, is a is a 3D, it's a flat version. That might be more fun to play, but it will probably it, uh, certainly is much less I, visually. I'm curious if there is a. You didn't come across any reference to a Spectrum version of Paradroid, did you? Was that a C64 there's, only? There, this basically is the Spectrum okay. version. Okay. There, I don't. As far as I know, there is no. I mean, unless it's something that's, kept, that's came out recently. Uh, it, that, as far as I know, this there was no officially released Paradroid for this. Um, I did look up some reviews for this thing. If I can dig through my mounds and mounds of paperwork here to try to find them. Um, it got pretty good scores. Uh, I mean, this is a well-regarded game, Boatster. Uh, on uh, the uh, World of Spectrum, this has an 8.5. Wow. It's very high. Yeah. Uh, Yours, Sinclair, gave it 9 out of 10. Uh, crash. I love that. All caps. Mm-hmm. Crash. 94%. Crash smash. Yeah. That's what they called it. More modern. <laughs> you tumble to the floor. I felt too tall. <laughs> I never like to tower over you. At least not physically. Do you know how weird it is to be said all of a sudden the guy beside you just shrinks four <laughs> inches? It's so discombobulating. Um, Eurogamer, this is a newer review, gave it 7 out of 10. And a Sinclair User gave this the uh, Sinclair User Classic Award in, in its May 86 issue. And uh, the Spectrum version was voted the 19, number 19 in the Euro uh, Sinclair Reader's Top 100 Games of All Time. Oh my gosh. High so, praise indeed. Yeah. I actually found a copy of this on on eBay, believe it or not. Of course, it was in the UK. I think it was like seven bucks. 
So there was, if you were actually want to get this, it was a it was a compilation mm. tape. I guess they had compilation tapes. Yeah, they had, and this is what this was amongst those. It was mm. a compilation tape. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. But you know, this is one of those games I might um, look for a like a, a updated version that they might have done some tweaking on. Quasitron ninety five. You know, I will say, and along those lines, because listen. Some of these Spectrum games are live beyond their years, and mm-hmm. this is one of them. Me and the boy picked up the new Chaos, the PC Steam version. I don't know if I mentioned on the show. I uh, know. I don't think you've talked about it on the show. And I bought. I actually bought something off Steam. You buy stuff every time you buy something on Steam. You say that you bought 16 million things off Steam. Well, the kid is addicted to Chaos. I told you that before, but we love the new. We love the new version, and we haven't put. We've been playing amongst is ourselves. It, how does it? How does it? Um I mean, what does it look like? I don't know anything about it. It looks great. Uh, you'll recall that Chaos, the original version on the Specky, was just sort of that you were all on that one big kind of square board. Yeah. And this one, there's like, there's uh, you're on different planets, they have different terrain, there's so different there's elevations like and stuff. And things. Then there's like, uh, uh, we haven't even done the adventure game part. We've just been playing to, 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 with ourselves on, mm-hmm. you know, at home. Right. There's online play. We haven't even got into that stuff yet because we're just trying to learn, master it. There's tons of spells. Tons of beasts. It's awesome. Is it still kind of procedurally generating? Every time you play, you get different spells. As far as I could, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And the same, I think the same guy is responsible okay, for it. Cool. So I mean, it's not like some guy said, "Let's do this." I mean, this is the guy, mm-hmm. and uh, we have a lot of fun. And the kid, we I still have the Spectrum version on my phone. And if any time, if I leave my phone sitting around, I come back and he's sitting there playing it. He loves. It. He plays the crap out of it. So the kid's a Spectrum. He's a Spectrum boy now. That's it's good. It's happened. That's great. It always fills me with delight to see him playing a game that was never released in the states. Was came out like '83 or yeah. whatever. It makes me so happy. Oh, I love it. That's awesome. So this could be next on the docket because <laughs> I could see I could see getting into this in a speedier version. Um, we did get one Discord community review. Uh, this came from Pixels at Dawn. He says, a unique improvement on the C64 Paradroid. Tricky with hard to master controls. Yeah. Uh, he says he uses a gamepad at an angle, but visually appealing and rewarding, especially with the fun hacking minigame to upgrade your robot. 8.5 out of 10. I didn't think the minigame was all that fun. Yeah. Well, you know. But it, it, I mean, it, it, it was functional. I'll tell you what, though, minigames have not improved over the course of time because you're still playing these same kind of hacking minigames in almost every, like, the lock picking game in Oblivion is the same sort. It's uh-huh. just, you know, hacking. This is what leads a whole generation of people growing up thinking they're hackers. Because they oh, I've got, man, I've mastered that hacking minigame. I must be a hacker. <laughs> <You know? laughs> that's, a, that's what it is. <laughs> Um, so, uh, I forgot to talk about our community question this week. Oh, and now's the time. So, uh, if you were into robots, especially if you are listening to this from England, because we don't know anything about the robot scene in 80s England. There was probably awesome <laughs> was stuff scene. over there that never came out here. Like the Jeeves 4000. The G- <laughs> like, I want to know what drink mixing robots you had to choose from. Fresh in your drink, in the, governor. Right. That's what it in says. the 80s. Let me know. Send me an email at feedback at rsinclair.com, or you can leave a comment on the YouTube video. Aaron, I'd like to thank our awesome, first of all, I'd like to thank Clive's Club, our uh, game selection group on Patreon for picking this awesome game for us. Yeah, it was definitely different, that's yeah. for sure. And I'd like to thank our Spectrum supporters uh, for this show, Harbo Knot, Graham Vebke, Frodo NL, Tapes from the Crypt, Pixels at Dawn, Chris Foltz, Paul Harrington, and Christopher Hassel. Thank you so much for supporting us on Patreon. And if you'd like to support us, if you like the show, it's patreon.com slash our Sinclair. Aaron, next week we're going back into the world of sports, the wide world of sports. It's wacky. What do you got? We're going to play a game called Match Point. Oh, is that is that tennis? I don't know. You don't know. I've not. I make it a point never to look at a game. Are you until sure? It's, are you play. sure it's a sports game? I am because it could star the arsonist guy for the other. We were coming earlier. <laughs> that, that's true. That's true. It was filed under the Clive's Club spreadsheet for sports games. All right. So. Fair enough. All right. So uh, I also want to thank everybody that's hanging out with us in the chat right now. We record this show every Friday. This week we're recording on Friday just a little early. Uh, Retro Man Cave is here. Pixels at Dawn. Michael Ryan. Necronom. Lobsterminator X. Uh, Pack Billy, Duncan Styles. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. I will say, since Retro is in the house, he's doing a tremendous series on the Dragon 32. Oh, call, yeah. Any of these? I've seen those. And those he, are great. You know, I'm a Coco guy, yep, as you yep, know. This so is I'm, right up your and alley. And so I've been incredibly excited to see the guts of one of these things. 
You know, I want. Is it really similar them. to the Coco? Is it the same machine? It's the same machine, but the guts are different. Oh. But I love that. And uh, he also had a video on on the light gun this week. We talked about it while you were uh, out. And uh, with a new light gun uh, being made, he had the guy that's putting it together. It's going to be able to uh, be used in LCD panels. I'm very excited about that. So good job this week. I love both those. And the dragon stuff. Next, The next rendition is going to be getting into some of the gameplay. And so I'm looking forward to seeing what it looks Pixels like. Pixels of Dawn says, here are Dragon Roar, the more, the new Amigos podcast coming this hey, fall. Hey, listen. I love, well, listen. Now, that would be in my wheelhouse it's because the Coco, effectively, is right. the most part the same machine. Do you think there's enough Coco games to do a show on the Coco? Listen. A lot of people, I keep hearing this over and over, all the Coco that kind of let people down to Gates. I mean, it's called the there Trash are, 80 for no. a reason, right? In fact, I didn't even think Retro mentioned it. Like, yeah, the games are, the games are, t- I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that. <laughs> the games over the Coco were awesome. Don't believe the hype. Now, were they Quasitron awesome? No. But they had some good games. They were a lot of fun. They had some good arcade ports. And I think it's an underrated system for gaming. I really do. I think there is a lot more game there than you would think and there's a lot more games than people think i mean i had a ton of games and they were a lot of fun everyone's got the thing they grew up with you know they've got a special love for it mm-hmm. i'm not saying the coco's on the same level as say the spectrum but there was some good quality stuff for it and the dragon thing the connection there i enjoy given what we do it makes it more exciting for me since the dragon was in the uk and i had the uk version over here in the states that it's is kind of pretty, fun yeah that is pretty cool All right, guys, so we will see you next week for another edition of Our Sinclair. Until then, rewind tape and press play.